course is a cancer biology, which is a senior level class offered by Biological Sciences, my home department. It's been a popular course for a number of years. I think that's understandable given the prevalence of cancer in people's lives. The lifetime incidence is one in two for men and one in three for women. And so everybody has a, a cancer story, a, a personal relation. Many of our students are interested in health science careers. And so this has always been a popular class, one I've never had the opportunity to teach until this past spring when I was asked to fill in for a colleague and teach the course. Back in 2000, two scientists who work in my field, I'm a cell biologist, published an article called The Hallmarks of Cancer in, in the journal Cell, which is one of the top science journals in the field of cell biology. And they addressed what has been increasingly recognized as maybe the fundamental challenge in cancer, which is that every single incidence of cancer is a brand new disease. So the entire course is taught in an, an active learning team-based format where students work in teams and have regular weekly or bi-weekly assignments that they solve in teams. But the real capstone for the course, replacing any sort of a final exam, was for each team to create some sort of a public work that demonstrated a deep understanding of the hallmarks of cancer, but also added value to the hallmarks. And so each student team was able to identify the, the target audience, and they were really diverse in terms of who they were reaching out to. Some were reaching out to fellow students, some to children, some to people who didn't have the benefit of a college education to manage and understand their cancer situations. The students were also free to choose the medium, and, and so that was also very diverse, everything from visual art to a children's book to a, a beautiful website, uh, completely different media across the board. And each student had to find a mentor, um, somebody who brought some expertise to their project that I certainly didn't have and, and that they needed. And so they worked with nurse practitioners and um, psychologists and, and people, and also some other scientists who were more specified in, in the areas of their interest. I think the inspiration for suggesting an exhibit was the, um, the art of cancer. And this is a series of 12 paintings. There are a pair, there's a pair of paintings for each hallmark. And what, the larger painting in this series um, is a visual representation of that hallmark. The smaller painting represents a very promising treatment or therapy that really hones in and tries to attack the cancer based on that particular hallmark. And some of the other projects, there are, there are two books. One is a, a cookbook and the students researched different types of cancer-fighting foods. A lot of them are antioxidants. And then found some very rich scientific literature on how those foods prevented or, or in some ways helped to treat cancer based again on attacking a specific hallmark. And interspersed with all the recipes they chose are some very detailed molecular signaling pathways about the hallmark. So it's very scientifically rich, um, wonderful mm -hmm. foods. Also on the food theme, one group of students developed a dining plan, a weekly dining plan for students at Virginia Tech and identified foods that they could find in the dining halls across campus. And so there's every day of the week there's a, a different food selection and, and they looked at a host of different dining halls on campus since students can choose to eat in different places. Uh, there's a children's book and that's a wonderful storybook to explain the hallmarks of cancer to children and really that was a, a pretty amazing visual piece as well and it became our <laughs> I think our our major um, front piece for the marketing. Well the students were certainly proud of this work. Um, it was less about what they learned and more about what they created and, and the knowledge represented here is knowledge of their own making. They generated this knowledge and also I think the other part that really resonated with them is that these these pieces didn't just get relegated to my office or end up in their apartment closet or maybe in the recycling bin. 
Um, they came here for the exhibit and that, that means a lot to them. They know there's a, an audience for their work. And many of the pieces are, are, have a longer term, a lifespan. Another piece of the exhibit was a project on medulloblastoma, which is a childhood brain cancer. And so there's a very scientifically rich handbook created for physicians something that's more in lay terms for families. And then to top it all off, one of the students is actually a survivor of medulloblastoma and he very much wanted to create something for children with this condition going through chemotherapy. So there's a beautiful box and inside are all the things that he felt a student or a child would um, benefit from going through chemotherapy, a teddy bear, a journal, some beautiful colored pencils, a bandana for losing hair, and candy because something he appreciated that nobody else in the class did, including myself, was just the terrible taste that chemotherapy leaves in your mouth. And so he brought a very personal, direct insight to us as we talked about all these molecules and drugs for cancer. He reminded us of some of the, maybe the lesser side effects, but something that would really matter to a kid. I think the most important thought I have is just how incredibly proud I am of the students and would encourage anyone to empower their students, trust their students a bit more, um, set very high standards but allow the students some of that agency in, in designing some of the parameters of their learning and then just stand back and really expect to be amazed. Let it happen. Don't get in the way. <laughs> Be there when they need you, but really let the learning happen.